Assalamu alaikum hello viewers uh, Aisha Tewa ci bir kër gi dé dañ né loy yëngu loy yëngu lu ko yëngal ak ëpp doole kon nak ni mako faral di défé rek la koy défé ñu waat na nak di leen néwé nitti rek comme ñu ko faral di défé légui né damay bay suma gan gi mu nuyo wax leen mo may kan la tay ñu commencer pélo bi nuy na la fay na la mu nga gis ma gan bi nak dafa nek nga xamné déggu olof mu ni légui tay ñu def ko ci anglais kon nak légui dañ koy jaxasé nak mom fu mu jaar rek mu top ko fa kon nak légui you can tell the people who is lamin a sonko okay assalamu alaikum viewers my name is lamin a sonko a native of kombatu jareng mm -hmm. a student of the university of the gambia currently the deputy technical and logistic minister and by the 18 executive council a young entrepreneur who is in construction furniture and roofing business mashallah mom nak dafa ay mom day yengu ci le lu ne mom mu ne furniture lay defa capinta la dal dem ci maison bi te day am tamit lu muy def ci souf manam poultry mashallah lamin so what brought up the name like el magnifico wow el magnifico is a name that i get from my favorite childhood cartoon that is tom and jerry <laughs> really yeah uh -huh, mashallah how how did you bring the name because tom and jerry is my favorite cartoon from childhood mm -hmm. and i like their episodes and one of these episodes you know tom always trouble jerry but this other episode mm -hmm. jerry troubles tom because jerry okay. is kind of huge <laughs> kind of fat and he was having a young nephew that Tom always chased and anytime Tom <laughs> chased the nephew, the nephew will run into Jerry's food and like it will, he will come for revenge. Okay. That's how it has been happening. So um, uh, the madam in the house think like Tom cannot control Jerry. Mm -hmm. So he go and bought another three cards to come and control this. But when the, uh, the lady bought these three cards, uh -huh. Tom make it clear to them that you are coming to challenge El Magnifico. <laughs> so when they challenge um, uh, Jerry and Jerry take them a lesson that they will never forget. And okay. at the end of the show, it was like El Magnifico. El Magnifico. So I just go out there to search for the meaning of the El Magnifico. I come to know that it was a Spanish word, okay. which means the magnificent, the unstoppable and all that. Uh -huh. And I love the name. I use it for one. Mashallah. So you want to say that there's nothing can stop you and then bring out another name apart from this El Magnifico? No, nothing can stop me simply because I don't ever feel that I'm lucky. I am blessed. Okay, Mashallah. So how did you start this work as, as a carpenter and masong? Uh, you do roofing, you do construction and do you, do, you also do furniture. So how do you add all this to be your work? Okay, everything starts in 2013. But before 2013, I was very engaged with the job. Because my pops, my dad is a contractor, so anytime he have a contract, sometimes I'll follow him to the site, like where he is working. Yeah. So he'll always be like, El boy, like if he's going out, he'll trust me with calculation and all that. Mm -hmm. He'll be like, these people are to concrete this place. Mm -hmm. So whenever they are to concrete this place, like the measurement is going to be two is to one is to one. Okay. One will borrow of sand, two will borrow of um, uh, the gravel mm -hmm. and one bag of cement. So anytime he's doing such work, even if he's going out and anytime he come back, he will ask me like, what have they done? Okay. So like, I know this is the calculation. I know the calculation part of the work from childhood at a very early age. Mm -hmm. So as time goes on, whenever the Muslims are working, mm -hmm. I also see to it that anytime they are working, you will tell them that you will have a C there, you will have a this. A C mean like a line that is not straight, it like half a bend. Okay. So if you don't take care of it, this is what is going to happen and how to use the level. So from that childhood, I can see what exactly was in the business. Mm -hmm. But it was never part of me because I wanted to be an accountant from day one. Yeah, so that, 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 that's all I do. So I just go there to like have fun and like create time for myself. Mm -hmm. So in 2013, when I was done with my grade 12 exams at Nusrat Senior Secondary School, mm -hmm. I went back home to Tujereng and find my dad on another house project. This time it's at, own, our, our, at our own home. Okay. So my uncle was the head of that contract. That is Ajisankare. If not for him, I would have been not been here. <laughs> Bravo to Ajisankare. Yeah. So anytime he is coming to work when I was there, mm -hmm. he didn't come with his apprentice simply because I'm there to assist him. So at first I was really angry and mad at him. I would be telling my friends that this guy, I don't even know what is his problem. You know? <laughs> like he like hit he, me. He, yeah, he, he, hit he just comes here to disturb me. He has his apprentice. Why is he using me? Mm -hmm. So Was I, he not giving your money? Yeah, he was. Nah. Yeah, he so was then you should not have been complaining yeah. a lot. Though. But at first, I didn't even fancy anything like this because mm -hmm. all I want to focus on is the academic, like the academic track, and get to my, I get myself into accounting field. Okay. And by then, I was also trying to go to Amba. How did they call it again? MDI to study accountancy. Mm -hmm. So I started with MA1, FA1, MA2, FA2. This is how I was going. Mm -hmm. So whenever he come to work and I'm not doing anything, he will ask me to join him. But at the end of 
work every day, my dad will give me like 200 and he will give me like 200. So anything time he give me like the 200, I'll be like my dad gave me 200. He'll be like, if you are to reject money from someone, mm -hmm. it should be from your dad, not from me. I'm your uncle. And remember, I'm your uncle. I'm going to give you my daughter. Okay. So I'm giving you this money and one day you have to return it back. So it's just like, <laughs> keep it for me. Hope he give you the daughter now or not yet. You know uncles now. If I don't go to foreign, I'll be no daughter. Okay, okay. So, so uh, the 400, 400 every yeah, day. So, so the 400, 400, useful. like, it kept my pocket healthy. So mm -hmm. it was like, like I was 12, like, yeah. Like everyone. Yeah, so I was getting somewhere, you know. So okay. when he was about to be done with the house, mm -hmm. my daddy called somebody called Mr. Jiba to come and roof the house. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Jiba was to take care of the roofing and the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So when this Jiba come around to survey the house, it was like me and Jiba again. Mm -hmm. Jiba said he wanted to use me as his apple there. I was like, are you for real? Again, again. He, he said yes. I said, my uncle was here working for my daddy and he said he want to use me as an apprentice because he didn't have one. Yeah. And why don't you people like, all you people with like these skills and all those stuff mm -hmm. do not have apprentice. Why don't you even have apprentice? Is it because you don't want to pay them or what? Mm -hmm. He said, but even your uncle, if you work for him, he pay you the same amount he should pay his apprentice. Yes. It's not like we don't want to have apprentice, but the way the nature of the job is and the way the contract is, you're going to have your own apprentice, especially a carpenter who did not even have a backyard workshop. So because what is the nature of the job? Why are they not having an apprentice? Simply because, like for the carpenter, mm -hmm. you do roofing. Yeah. If you have one house now, before you have another one, it's like a month or two. Okay. If you bring somebody's son or daughter to be your apprentice, mm -hmm. You didn't give him anything at the end of the month because you don't have any returns or any business or any job to do. At the end of the day, the person won't be able to stay. Okay. So somebody can only maintain an apprentice only if he has a standard workshop mm -hmm. or he is in a, like, in a company where like, many people know him. His business is exposed to the work. Like from here, he goes to another place. Mm -hmm. But someone who will have one contract here and sit for like two to three months before he have another one mm -hmm. cannot maintain an apprentice. Mm -hmm. So when he explained those conditions to me, I come to understand that they don't keep apprentices, not because they are greedy, okay. but because it's the nature of the job. Okay. So I agree to work with him too. Okay. But I tell him clearly it's not going to be for free, even if it's my <laughs> father's house, because I know my pops is going to pay, so I will also have my court of the national cake. Okay, so how, how do you manage to be like going to school and also doing this work? Yeah, that is because I was in Ghana for these carpentry studies. And when I was going to Ghana, I was going, I go to Ghana as a boy and when coming back, I come back as a man. So what can you tell us is the experience in Ghana? Yes, like Ghana is really developed. Mm -hmm. If you look at their, like their, their, their cities, mm -hmm. you look at their furnitures, you look at their seat structures, mm -hmm you will agree with me that most of them are from their own home people. Mm -hmm. Even their kente clothes and everything mm -hmm. are from their home people. Okay. So their youths come up to work to develop their country, not to sit at booths and strassers to just talk about foreign. Okay. So when I was here, I was having these fancy dreams. If I go to foreign, I'll be able to make these changes. Mm -hmm. That was when I was a boy. But when I was there, I see the actual thing. I see the real life. I became a man. Mm -hmm. And when I come back home, in respect of what I am doing at school, mm -hmm. I still want to take part in the nation development by investing in skills. Mm -hmm. But in your, in your explanation, you said Ghana. What took you to Ghana? Um, uh, it was the ACE Communication Whitehead project. Mm -hmm. Why was the project raised? Um, the project was raised to abolish, if not to abolish, to reduce the rate of illegal migration. That was what we simply call Barkway in the Gambia. Okay. Because we can re uh, if you can remember, if you watch documentaries, mm -hmm. you will come to understand that in 2012, 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. a lot of youth in Africa, especially Gambia, Nigeria, Ghana, lost their lives in the Mediterranean simply because yes. they want to have the greener pasture mm -hmm. in foreign. Mm -hmm. So when they cannot have the visa, when one door is closed, another one is open. So the shortest journey is like Barkway through okay. Italy and you will find yourself in Italy. Okay. So when this Italy thing was coming up, Ace Communication, Fatim Baja and her team members mm -hmm. see to it that this is very necessary and somebody need to put measures mm -hmm. to, like, to engage the youth. When, once we engage them, once they have what they are looking for in this country here, they will not risk their life going to, you, how to, call it, to, to Italy or any other foreign country because mm -hmm. of like, greener pastures. So they come up with the project and the aim of the project is just work away, if I like to, to be precise. Mm -hmm. So like they select 25 candidates or 25 ambassadors from the Gambia, mm -hmm. and one of those. Yeah. They select 25 from Ghana, they select 25 from Nigeria. Okay. So the 25 they select from Ghana, half of them come to the Gambia to study tailoring, mm -hmm. and the other half go to Ghana to study carpentry, that is furniture. Okay. So the 25 from Ghana, 14 of us go to Ghana to study furniture. And 14 nine, of you, 14. the 25 that they selected oh, yeah, from yeah. the Gambia. 14 go to Ghana to study furniture, mm -hmm. and the other 9 go to Nigeria to study agriculture. Okay, so you were a part of the 14, 14 that went to Ghana. Ghana? Yes, and okay. I was the team leader. Okay. 
So from Nigeria, the same thing. The half in Ghana, the other half in Gambia, the storytelling. Because Gambians, we have like this first one and everything. You can just see from yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, with that. So any, you any, other, any, any other person can come to the Gambian story, like how to do tell it. Mm -hmm. So this is how I find my way to Ghana, and I was there for six months from. 29 April on the on Thursday mm -hmm. to February 29 mm -hmm. to the 2016 we were back. Yeah, as you can see, come fatally na masah, come gay creation yung war fire. Come nung ko faral di deferek sa sune. Still nung yung watan akin ng hamente na moy lamen ay song ka mom na dafane ka kapinta moy yung usiwalum roofin furniture construction mom Paul Teresa ham na ko kon lamen gacheng galama mashala. So how do you get your supplies like to make your these materials? Okay, I will start that from like our Ghana trip mm -hmm. because if you look at that trip, it's just to eradicate or reduce the rate of Amber Barkway. Mm -hmm. So when we come back, at the end of the project, what we were told is we are all going to have our tools. Mm -hmm. These tools that we are going to use to have our own workshop. Mm -hmm. So if I have my own workshop, I wouldn't think of going to Barkway mm -hmm. because I will have exactly what I will have in foreign if mm -hmm. things work for me here. And any youth that I employed in my workshop or I am working with, mm -hmm. would not also think of going to Barkway simply mm -hmm. because everything will be there for him on a silver plate. Yes. But when we come back, though the, the project was nice, mm -hmm. it was cool, it teach me a lot, and I get 90% of what I do like right now from that project. Mm -hmm. I learned all my lessons and everything, though I started the work here, mm -hmm. but the real work was in Ghana. This is where, that, that is where it even changed me. Mm -hmm. To have the mentality of well, I need to contribute to my nation development. It all comes from the ACE communication project. Okay, that's why you said when you were going, you were a boy. boy now I'm, now you're a man. I'm a man now. Okay. But when we come back home, what they gave us is a saw, mm -hmm. two screw drivers, a plane, and a few carpentry tools which are in a box. Mm -hmm. And I'm not about to say anything bad about them, but that cannot even start a bagayard workshop. Mm -hmm. So some of us were frustrated. We keep on running from one place to another. We went to Ace Communication on several occasions, and Fatim Baji mm -hmm. told us that he is going to look for a loan for us to start our own business as yes, we want. Yes. Because in Ghana, the only thing we are using are machines. Mm -hmm. So we don't even have a single machine in the package that they gave us. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's, we cannot just start anything with that. So everybody was frustrated. That those days we call each other like breaking records. Mm -hmm. We keep on going to their office, but nothing. Mm -hmm. So three of us even have to decide to go on the journey. The project was to stop the journey, and three of us even hit the journey. Okay. That is Madi, Madi is a native of Banjun. He's from here. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. and Lamin Fati. Mm -hmm. Thank God we and Lamin Fati are now in foreign. But as as Takfirola, we and Amba, Madi and Lamin Fati are now in foreign. But we lost his life on the journey <laughs> simply because when he came back, he was disappointed. Nothing. All hopes are there. He's from like another country. He's going to be a big man, and there's nothing. So for people like us, it was kind of cool. Our parents are there to support us, to pay our school for us mm -hmm. to move on. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm going to school and still focusing on my business. Okay. Because I can still stand on my own. Mm -hmm. Simply because there is no support for now. Okay, so can, what can you tell us that is the difference between you, your work, and the other carpenters in the Gambia? Well, the main thing is there is no power in our work. Because I don't think the world even operates with power like right now. Mm -hmm. You only use power when you are so that you are going to win. Mm -hmm. So the carpenters we have in the Gambia, they use mahogany, they use amber timbers, they use red timbers to make their own beds. Mm -hmm. It requires a lot of energy, mm -hmm. it requires a lot of time and all that. Yeah. But when we are in Ghana, what we study is simple furniture, mm -hmm. but the materials are costly. Because what you need is a design cardboard, mm -hmm. a design plywood, everything that you are going to have is going to be something designed. Mm -hmm. That is straight from the factory. This is what you are going to use. Make your own cuttings. At the end of the day, make half your furniture. So if you look at the furniture that we make and the furniture that are imported in this country from foreign, mm -hmm. you wouldn't know the difference if somebody didn't tell you that this one is made in the made Gambia in here. Gambia, yeah. So that is the difference we have with the Gambian carpenters. We don't use wood. Wood is too hard for us to handle. Okay, so where is your place, uh, your workshop located? My workshop is located in Kombo Tujeram, but I hardly work in my workshop if I didn't have a contract. Okay. Simply because like here, the beds that we make, if mm -hmm. you can have it at a cheap price, it will be like 18000 mm -hmm. okay. And since I started this work, I didn't think I have a customer in Tujere. In All two, my yeah. customers are from outside. But I can say the place is far. Yeah. Maybe you can like uh, say you need a support for a place. So, yes, like that's what we need. I don't even work alone because since we came back from Ghana, mm -hmm. I have this friend called Farmer Sedekan. He was working with some Nigerians around the Westfield. Mm -hmm. But when we have this for the 7,000 project, mm -hmm from Amba, Nakuk, to establish our own business. This is what we use mm. 
to buy some of the materials we have in and our workshops your yeah, to start our own business. Mm -hmm. But even with those, that 47,000, we have some materials, we have some, um, uh, some machines that we need. Mm -hmm. We don't have it all. And I know we can't have it all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And simply, if we make our bets, the bed is costing 18,000, 20,000 or even more. The wardrobe is 15,000, 13,000. Mm -hmm. Though it's up to standard. But you park it out there before you have a close stomach for it is a problem. Mm -hmm. So we even have a, like a plan to have a workshop around Serakunda where we will have a proper partnership okay. or Greater Banyun area. Mm -hmm. But if we think about the rent, mm -hmm. the electricity, the, um, and everything that is involved in it, the transport from your hood mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. to your workshop and everything, mm -hmm. you will come to realize that it is going to be very hectic if you didn't have potential customers mm -hmm. and a good foundation. Mm -hmm. So this is why our business is not working. But apart from that, if we have a good location and a support, we are going to control the furniture atmosphere in this country because even the Indians cannot challenge us. <laughs> Mashallah. Yeah. So what details can you give the people watching about you, where to meet you and like to contact you for if they need those materials you are working on? Uh, well, they can just check on Skills GM because we have a new platform in the Gambia that is called Skills GM. Mm -hmm. This Skills GM connect all the skilled workers in the Gambia you pay to register in their network. Okay. So whenever come, somebody just log into www.skillsgm.com, mm -hmm. you, like, you search for Carpenters, you will see my profile. Okay. You search for Muscle, you will see people's profile. So this Skills GM have the combination of all the skilled workers in the Gambia, those that registered with them. Mm -hmm. So you can find me in Skills GM. The only social media I'm kind of active on is just WhatsApp. I have my Facebook account, sometimes I update it, but I miss using it for like six months now. Okay, so what is your WhatsApp number? 380-8580 or 287-8580. Okay, then the number will be below because some people might not catch it up. Yeah. So we are at the end of the show, Can, so please tell us your final words before we leave. Okay, my final words will be to the youths of the Gambia. Mm -hmm. Because most of us have a dream of going to foreign and if we are not in foreign, we are not going to make it. Mm -hmm. And that is not simply because that is how the youths feel like doing it or this is what the youths really want. Mm -hmm. But it's because of the society. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the white collar job, people think you are useless. Yeah. If you are from foreign, even if you come home with empty pocket, people okay. worship you. <laughs> even like right now, if you want to get married, the only the first thing the parents of the girl will ask is, what is his job? <laughs> Where is he from? Anytime in Mandinga, we come mala mola, we have nothing. So, like, when all the youths, like, their minds are painted with such ideologies, mm -hmm. nobody will be able to work. Mm -hmm. Like, if you are a Muslim, you will not be even proud to call yourself a Muslim anywhere. Mm -hmm. Because there is this marriage ceremony I attended in Rufu, who are called in Sukuta, I was so disappointed. Mm -hmm. The elder in the Amdo called the Masjid was praying, mm -hmm. and was praying for the couples not to have a Muslim child. Like, the mosque that they are sitting yeah. in is not built by the Muslim. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> But this so, is really serious. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I'm serious about it. Mm -hmm. So if our mindset, our mentalities did not change towards development, we will never develop. Because most of this country, you will never see a government handling a project. Anytime you heard about a project from government or from private sectors, know that it is awarded to Senegalese or other con people from Ghana and other places. Mm -hmm. When we have young, talented, creative Gambians here, mm -hmm. simply because they are not oriented and they are not amber, giving the support that they need, mm -hmm. they don't do it. Mm -hmm. Even me, sometimes people get worried, like you are going to school. You are at the university, you have your course, you have everything to do, mm -hmm. you have a lot of assignments and everything. Mm -hmm. You have these Muslim jobs, you take contracts, you do roofing and all that. When I saw them, the pictures that I do, one of my friends just texted me, he told me, Lamin, I said yes. He <laughs> said, if you are not careful with your status, people will think that you are a liar. <laughs> I said, why? He said, today, what you will post is you at school. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, you at roofing, like at a, at a, at a work. Mm -hmm. Day after that, it will be you and your poultry farm. And like all those crazy <laughs> things. Do you think people are even going to believe that you do all that? I said, well, I don't need to force them to believe. Yeah. The only thing I need to do is to send the message. Mm -hmm. And the message, if it is going to hit them, it must hit them hard. Yeah, so that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Lamin. Lamin, I want to say that you are going to be able to make a lot of money. You are going to be able to make a lot of money. You are going to be able to make a lot of money. You are going to be able to make a lot of money. Thank you so much, Aisha. I want to say that you are going to be able to make a lot of money. You are going to be able to make a lot of money. Bye-bye. Thank you.